Lord with the Lord, and it's done with the courage bold I should upon his word. I would not be denied, I would not be denied, till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. Oh, Satan said my Lord was gone and would not hear my prayer. But praise the Lord, the work is done, and Christ the Lord is here. I would not be denied, I would not be denied, till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. Night. Amen. Good singing, church. Turn over to 354. Let's sing, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow, 354. All right, let's sing it out. Verse 1. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from the sunshine, for his skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb. Every bird is getting lighter, every cloud is silver lined. There the sun is always shining, there no tear will in the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky. Many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. I don't know about tomorrow, it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me, and a path that be my portion, maybe through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his many things about tomorrow, I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. All righty, you can be seated. Amen. Well, good evening, church. Hope you've had a good day. Thank you for being back and faithful uh, to the church tonight. Uh, good to be around God's people, amen. Uh, thankful for the service this morning. I hope the Lord spoke to you and that you found what you stood in need of in the message. Handful of announcements. Don't forget about this Friday, um, and I hope you'll pray for me. I'll be preaching at the Community Baptist Church Revival uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning. Brother Josh Engel will be preaching Saturday evening. And the choir here is going to be singing on Friday night. Lord willing, we'll leave from the church at 5 o'clock. That's plenty of time to get over there. And there will be a meal after service. And so I invite everyone to participate. Please come out. 
I think you'll enjoy it, uh, getting to be around other congregations of people and participating in church with them and, and then just supporting your youth choir. Amen. That's a blessing. Um, March 23rd and March 30th, church is going to be doing visitation uh, for our Resurrection Sunday. If anybody wants to uh, cook breakfast for either of those days, let me know. That's always a blessing. Uh, I find that it's typically a blessing for the eaters and the cookers. It's just a great thing to do. So if anybody would like to do that, please let me know, and uh, that'll, be, that'll be great. Sunday, March 24th is uh, Pastor's Wives Appreciation uh, after that evening service. This is next Sunday, uh, March 24th, and I failed to mention this, but we'll also do our uh, communion service that, that evening, okay? So we'll have the Lord's Supper, um, and then after that, we'll go downstairs and enjoy some uh, Pastor's Wives Appreciation and, and we're going to fry fish. Please bring sides, desserts, and drinks. And uh, as far as the, the gifts, if you'd like to donate to the gifts, please see Miss Angela or Miss Debbie. Easter eggs, empty bags of eggs for candy or in the foyer. Please return them to the printer room downstairs with the eggs filled with candy. Amen. And then Resurrection Sunday is March 31st. We'll have a meal following service. Church has pulled pork and chicken provided. Please bring sides and desserts. And uh, typically we have a pretty good congregation, so uh, uh, please help provide the food so that uh, there's plenty to eat. I think that's all the announcements that I have. Miss Angela. Very good. So please write a note of encouragement and put them in the prettied up jars in the foyer. Awesome. Amen. Anything else? Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be saved. And uh, I'm thankful that we serve a real God and a great God. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer before we do. Does anybody have a prayer request you'd like to make mention of before we pray? You got one, bud? What is that? Oh, well, let's pray for little man back there. No more bad dreams. Amen. Good job, buddy. Somebody else, prayer request. Yes, sis. Let's pray for Jack Annell. Let's pray for Jack Annell, truck wreck, and has now uh, had a trait put in. Let's pray the Lord help him and heal him. Somebody else. Destiny Brown. Let's pray for Destiny Brown. Somebody else? Anything at all? Yeah. Let's remember Chrissy and Brooklyn going on a missions trip. Pray the Lord watch over them. Anybody else? Carla? Oh, Lord. Okay. Let's remember uh, Carla's friend Austin and his knee problems. Brother? What's his name? Her name? Okay. Let's remember uh, neighbor Brenda. Man, thank you, brother. 
anybody else? Remember Marcello passing of his girlfriend. Anybody else? It's good to be saved, ain't it? Man, I'm glad we serve a real God. I'm thankful for his grace and his mercy. And uh, let's at this time gather in together around the altar. Let's enjoy some time together in one mind, in one accord, talking to the Lord about these prayer requests. Remember me. I always covet your prayers as I stand to preach. I need you to pray for me that I can uh, say what the Lord would have me say, be what the Lord have me be. He's been good to us, better than we deserve. Take your time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this church. Thank you for these folk. Lord, I thank you for all the wonders that you've bestowed upon us. And Lord, I pray you'd be with these prayer requests. Be with Jack Annell. Pray you'd heal him from his uh, truck accident. Be with Destiny Brown. Pray, Lord, you'd help her to continue to get well. Lord, watch over Brooklyn and Chrissy as they go on their missions trip. Lord, I do pray you'd help them and watch over them. Pray, Lord, they'd experience a, a blessed trip. Lord, be with uh, Brenda and the fall she's experienced. We pray you'd heal her. Lord, be with Luke's friend, Marcelo, who uh, God has lost his girlfriend. And Lord, I just pray you'd help him. Help him to, Lord, I hope he's a saved man and lives for you. Just watch over him. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, Thank you for this church. Thank you for the service we had this morning. Lord, I thank you for the great many blessings and great many, uh, Lord, experiences you've bestowed upon us. And Lord, I pray you touch the service tonight. Help me, Lord, as I stand to preach. God, help me to say what you'd have me to say, Lord. And Lord, help me to do what you'd have me to do. Be obedient. Lord, I just love you tonight. And Lord, I thank you and pray that Everybody here would leave, Lord, stronger, encouraged, exhorted, excited, Lord, about what we get to do and be for you. It's a privilege to get to be a Christian. Help us to never forget it. Watch over us. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's have a choir make their way up.
much he has blessed all the joys that he has given me despite my sinful past no greater friend have i ever known than this one who walks by my side and oh what a difference since he came into my life Say 
safety of that kind of home. I know that you willingly suffered. Oh, but why would you suffer for me? I know what I am, and I don't understand how that I could be worth Calvary. of clay but somehow you saw more something worth dying for you paid more than you should have paid and I know that you've seen all my failures and yet your grace has always remained and someday you Baptizing with fire, and when John baptized him, 
the heavens were open, and God descended like a dove, and in the middle of it all, there was Jesus.
glad he's precious, amen. I'm glad he takes care of us and blesses us as much as we don't deserve it. I'm glad he gave his life for us. Somebody with a word on your heart, something you want to say or do at this time? I want to give the Lord praise. Anything at all. Amen. Somebody else this evening. All hearts free. All right. Brother Caleb. All right. Um, I'm in the book of Hebrews tonight. And... Um, I'm kind of going to be preaching along the lines of what we dealt with this morning. You know, <clears throat> the uh, the wilderness experience with the people of Israel, man. You can track that. You can track that uh, account, the mentioning of that account, man, through the whole Bible. It right. it was a big deal, right? You know, and there's just there's so much application to it. I don't know, I may end up preaching a handful of messages out of it before we're all said and done just because there's just so much good truth in it and and that we need, amen, we need. And so, you know, the thought this morning was uh, the danger of postponing our obedience to God and the principle that, you know, we don't like to think about this, but sometimes when we stall or when we refuse the will of God, and then God whoops us and shows us that we, we've made the wrong decision, that sometimes it's too late to then therefore make the right decision. Right, right. Sometimes you're just going to have to live with that. And that's why, that's why it's so important that we, uh, that we realize that the decisions that we make matter. Right. That... You can't afford, you cannot afford to just haphazardly do as you please and think that uh, why there will never be any repercussions. There, there can be, and, and a lot of times, sadly, there are, that it's too late to, to, to rectify, to correct. And so um, I think we got that this morning. But what I, I felt like after the service, I, I felt the need to kind of go into um, go into how we can live our life uh, in a manner that will help us to somewhat guarantee that we'll, we'll go in. We'll go into the candle. We'll make the right decision. You know what I'm trying to say? Like... It's important to know that the decisions you make are important. It's also important to know how to make the right decisions. Right. Amen. Right. And so that's what I want to kind of that's what I want to kind of look at tonight. And I'm in Hebrews chapter three, and in here in Hebrews chapter three, starting in verse seven, well, the the, the, the whole chapter uh, is pointing to Moses. Okay. I've preached through the book of Hebrews a little bit, and the theme of the book of Hebrews is that Christ is better. Christ is better. Uh, that's what the theme of the book of Hebrews is. It's going back and it's comparing Jesus to the things of the Old Testament and the, 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 the law and the things of that nature. And chapter 3 is actually dealing with how that Christ is better than Moses. Because Moses was a big deal. Amen. Sometimes... You know, I don't, I don't want to act like Moses was God. He was not God. But Moses was a big deal. And uh, the, the, the writer here of Hebrews, he's helping us to realize, he's helping the Jews, the Hebrews, to realize that Jesus is an upgrade. Amen. He's the ultimate upgrade. And that they needed to move on from Moses and, and embrace Jesus Christ. And so um, in verse 7, the writer here is dealing with the topic of the wilderness experience. Let's read with me. Look at verse 7. If you're there, say amen. amen. Wherefore, when you see wherefore, it's connecting to what's been said, and what's been said is Jesus is better than Moses. Wherefore, 
As the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, notice, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But, verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them, notice, that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, and I've made this clear. I mentioned this, I think, last week. You know, we're looking at application, obviously. We're looking at some typology here. We're, we're taking a peek into what Israel went through and learning from their mistakes, right? right? And what we're seeing is we're seeing that God has rest available. And the rest that is available is talking about Canaan land. Correct, church? Right. Now, again, Canaan land's been compared to the ultimate rest, which is heaven. And I'm, I believe there is some application there. Rest has been uh, compared to the child of God being in the perfect will of God and living in that lifestyle. There is rest. Would anybody argue with that tonight? No. And then also, the Canaan land's been compared to becoming a Christian. Being lost, putting your faith and trust in Jesus and experiencing salvation and how that, that also can be Canaan land. And would you agree with me that there's rest in salvation? Amen. And so those three areas, church, is, is honestly, I believe here in this passage, there is, there's application. There is clear application. So if you're here and you're not saved, the message tonight will help you to come to realize that uh, you need to get saved if you're here tonight and, and you're at a crossroads where God is leading you in a direction that you are to do His will or you can be, be disobedient to His will, then the message is for you as to how you can go into Canaan land, as to how you can go into the land of rest that God has for your life. I want you to notice a handful of things from this passage that I believe will help us to see how to go in. If I had a title, it'd be that. How to go, how to go into Canaan land. What was it? What exactly was it that kept those people from entering in? You say, well, they didn't want to. Right, right, but why didn't they? God had done miracle after miracle. God had given them a, a great man to lead them. Moses was a good man. The Bible tells us in I didn't read it, but in Numbers chapter 12, you know, Moses' sister go, rises up against him. She starts running her mouth at him. And the Bible says, it, it, it's almost like it, it just reminds you, it says, now Moses was the meekest man in the whole world. Like that's what the Bible says about Moses. That's a great thing that could be said about anybody, right? Amen. Moses was a big deal. And Moses was God's man. And God gave him to the people of Israel to lead them into uh, the Canaan land and they still didn't go. Why? Well, I want you to look at this stretch of Scripture. I want you to notice verse 7. Number 1, how to go into Canaan land. How to go into that rest for your life that God has set for you. Number 1, you got to hear Him. 
you got to hear him. You got to hear him. How many of y'all ever talk to somebody and the whole time you're talking to them, you know they don't hear me? Huh? How many of y'all know people like this? Why the whole time you're talking to them, you know what they're doing in their head, between their ears right now. They're trying to figure out what are they going to say to you. They don't hear what you're saying because they're too busy trying to figure out what they're going to say back. Help me. We do that to God. Do we do that to God or what? Huh? And, and, and we get so aggravated when folk do that to us and specifically children. Help me right there. When I look at my son and I say, hey, son, go get this out of the truck. And he looks at me, but he don't hear me. And he gets his shoes on. He goes out and 30 seconds, a minute later, he comes back in. What did you say you wanted me to do? It's like, yeah, that's what I thought, right? Because he ain't listening. He ain't listening. You know, sometimes if we're not careful, work, the grind, burdens, storms, you name it, our interests, all the things we're involved with get so burdensome and become so big in our life, bigger than they should, we can't even hear him. Can't even hear him. Couldn't hear him if we wanted to. Couldn't couldn't consume what he has to say if we wanted to because we're so full of the world. My dad used to preach a message and it was it was the title of it was I can't stand one more bite. And it was on the thought of spending your whole week consuming filth and trash and then showing up to church and not being able to take anything the preacher has to say cuz you're just too full of the world. Why do people miss? Why do people, uh, uh, why are people refuse the right to enter into rest that God wants them to go into? The Canaan lands of their life, because they don't hear Him. The preacher is preaching his guts out. God is speaking through His Word. God's Holy Spirit is speaking to them. Ain't that what the Bible says? I, look, again, church, we don't hear the audible voice of God. That being said, the voice of God is real. The leadership of God is just real. And I don't, again, there's this fine line. I don't want to be charismatic, but at the same point, I don't want to be so spiritually illiterate that when God is blatantly talking to me, I'm just too ignorant to hear Him. Because the Holy Spirit most definitely does lead, guide, and direct. As the Holy Ghost saith, verse 7. As the Holy Ghost saith, verse 15. Uh, while it is said today, if you will hear His voice, you must, you must appreciate the voice of God. And you must be available. Oh man, it's, it's, it's hard for the preacher to deal with these things. But I just, I can't express to you how important it is that when you show up to church, you show up ready to hear. You show up ready to hear. It's, 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 it's vitally important that you show up ready to hear. You know, I have, I have prayed, I have studied, and, and my desire is that there is something in these texts that I deliver unto you that will help you. But most of the time, if, if we're not careful, man, we show up to church with, without a focus, without an emphasis to hear what the preacher is saying. We flip our Bible open, and, and let me commend you, you know, again, I want to make sure I, real, I, I, I reiterate, Sunday night crowd, you ought to be pretty faithful to God. You're here on a Sunday night. And if you're here on a Sunday night, I would like to think that you've got devotion with God. You live for Him not just at church but at home. I'd like to think you read your Bible. And what happens a lot of times for Bible readers is they get a checklist. I'm not against checklists. I think those are great. Keep you honest, make you. But if we're not careful, we're more about checking that list than we are about reading. You need to read. You need to read, and you need to pay attention to what you're reading. You do. You do. I, how many of y'all remember? This is probably more for my generation, because reading, uh, the emphasis on reading was just not what it was in in the generations before me. But I can remember being told in class, you know, you're going to read X amount of pages, and I would, I would. Say the words in my mind. The word was said, but I was not consuming what I was reading. You know what I'm talking about? I remember being at your house one day, 
and we was doing Bible reading, and Nathan Barry was reading, and he read a chapter, Nathan, which is surprising. He probably didn't. He's probably unable to read. But uh, he said he read it. And I said, oh, good. I said, what'd you read about? He said, I didn't study it. I just read it. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Some of you teenagers is like, I know what he's talking about. They're re getting real quiet because they know. We have the ability. How many of y'all, when you read your Bible, you, sometimes you're like, I have no idea what I just read, and you read it again. Amen. That's good. Keep doing that. <laughs> Keep doing that. Just because you said the word doesn't mean you read it. Right. right? You need to know what you're reading. You need to pay attention. Why? Because this book's alive, it's supernatural, and we need to hear what God has to say. Y'all understanding me? Number one, how are we going to get into Canaan land? Number one, hear him. Number two, we need to hurry up. You know, this morning, the, the, the thought, the, the principle was, it could be too late. You know what we find in this passage? Look at what the Bible, look at the Bible, verse 7. As the Holy Ghost saith, today, verse 7. Look at verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Let's see any be hardened through deceitfulness. Verse 15. While it is said, today, today. One preacher said it like this. Uh, the devil is the uh, encourager of tomorrow. You're here, God forbid, you're lost. But may it be we've got some in our midst that's not saved and we, they keep telling themselves, I'll get saved one of these days. You may come to a place where it's too late. You say, Brother Shirley, you think God wouldn't save somebody? Well, what if they die? Right. Right. It's too late. There is no tomorrow. There are, there, there, hell's full of people that was banking on tomorrow. You understand? Like, listen to me. Today, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Stop banking on tomorrow. Your life is but a vapor, the Bible says, that appeareth for a moment and vanisheth away. And we're going to sit back and, and God's going to speak to us and we're going to hear him. So we got step one down. All right, I've read my Bible, listened to my preacher. God's dealt with me. He showed me I know what he wants. I'm just not ready yet, but when I get ready, I'll do it. Guess what? You better hurry up. <laughs> Amen. You don't have forever. You don't have eternity in this mortal life. This world is passing away. And you, you best, you best hurry up. Why do people... Uh, why do people go through the experience of not being allowed into the land of Canaan, that land of rest? It's because they let the grass grow under their feet. They don't hurry up. They think they got plenty of time. And before they know it, guess what? It's too late. You need to hurry up. You need to hear him. You need to hurry up. Number three, harden not your heart. Harden not your hearts. What the Bible says, verse 8. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, the provoking. It's talking about when the people of Israel, listen to me now, said no. When the people of Israel looked at God and Moses and said, no, we're not going in. Listen to me. When the people of Israel then said, we want to go back to Egypt. When the people of Israel said, we want to get us a new a ruler who will lead us back to Egypt. They were provoking God, provoking His anger, provoking His wrath. And the reason that they were willing to do that, they hardened their heart. What hardens a person's heart? When I think of hardening, uh, the hardening of a heart, I think of Pharaoh. How about y'all? I think about Egypt. I think about Pharaoh, how that he just continually got harder and harder and could not be moved. What does it? I'll tell you what does it. You ready for this? Pride. Pride hardens our hearts. Pride makes us think we deserve better than we've got. Pride makes us think we should get what we want. Pride makes us think that the world's out to get us. God's out to get us. How many of y'all's with me tonight? 
Pride's what convinces a man that he can point a finger of accusation to God at any point and it be appropriate. Pride. You know what God said? You better, you better keep a guard on your heart. Well, they hurt my feelings. You know what that will do to you? If you, in, if you lean in to hurt feelings, your heart will get hard. Well, I deserve better. Hey, you're going to put a case on that heart that's in, uh, un, un, unbreakable, in, unpenetratable, and, and it's dangerous. Why would the people of Israel that had been handpicked by the God of heaven, handpicked by the God of heaven, rescued from Egypt, taken through the Red Sea, given water and meat and bread, blessed them with a sacrificial system to take care of their sins, uh, at least in the capacity that was available? Listen to me. Why would that people look at God and look at God's man and say, No, we're not doing what you say. Because they had gotten prideful and their hearts were hardened. So what would cause them to get prideful? What would cause them to get hardened? What would cause them to lean into pride? Let me give you one. Are you ready? Listen to me. Murmuring and complaining. Every stinking one of us is, is bad for complaining. Every one of us. You're looking at one of the sorriest bunch of complaining you ever seen in your life. It's ridiculous. Listen to me. I'm so bad when I get done tonight, before I get in my truck after church, I will have complained about some sorry nothing. I love it when I do that after preaching to a bunch of people and one of y'all will hear it and be like, well, boy, ain't God good? And I'm like, now you're preaching to me. I see how it is. <laughs> Happened to me the other day. We had a nasty day outside, and it was cold, and I got done preaching, and I was like, man, I hate this cold weather. And I ain't going to say which one of you it was, but they started preaching to me. He's like, well, you know, it's actually not that bad. We could be in hell. And I'm like, I'm trying to complain here. Hush it. You know what happens? We hear murmuring. Let's do that. We hear some complaining. And instead of saying, no, not, not, I, I know better. I'm going to stay away from that. We say, wait a minute, what would you say? Oh, really? Well, guess what I heard? That heart's getting harder. And God's not going to be able to penetrate that heart. And you're going to suffer over that junk. Why? Because you're callousing yourself. You're callousing your heart. You know what's so precious in the life of a believer, listen to me. If you know what I'm talking about, this will resonate having a tender heart. You know what I love? I love walking into church, and it don't matter who testifies. It don't matter who lifts a hand of praise. It don't matter who does anything for the cause of Christ, who goes to the altar. I don't have an ounce of judgment. So what are you talking about? Oh, please. Please. We're the worst about somebody doing something for God and thinking they are the last person in the world or will be saying anything right now. You know what's nice? Having a tender heart and saying, Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory be to an almighty God. And if we'll maintain a tender, precious heart that God can prick at any time, it's easier for Him to tell you which way you're supposed to go. And that'll put you in that land of rest real quick and real simple. But when you let your heart get hard and you get callous towards the things of God and you get bitter, and God says, here it is, time to go in. I've got everything taken care of. Just be obedient. You're going to say, well, you know, um, I don't think you're right, God. It looks like to me it's dangerous to go. And before you know it, you've provoked the Lord's anger. And if you're not careful, you can't go in because it's too late. Do you see what I'm saying? How to go in? You've got to hear Him. You've got to hurry up. You've got to harden not your heart. Number four, you've got to help others. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called 
today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence, of our confidence. Do you see, the, do you see this? It's we, it's us, it's our confidence, steadfast unto the end. Let me tell you another way to help you harden not your heart is to help others. You see, the reason that they, their hearts had gotten hardened, and it wasn't just a hardened heart. Verse 10, Wherefore I was grieved with the generation that said they do always err in their heart. You see, the, 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 the heart is the problem here. Verse number 10, verse 12, it talks about their heart there. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any evil, an evil heart of unbelief. So not only do you got to harden not your own heart, listen to me, you got to look at your brother and your sister and you got to be a blessing to them and assist them in maintaining that softened, tender heart. Exhort one another, he said. That's to help. That's to lift up. Exhort. To encourage. To, uh, 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 to, 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 to bolster someone up. Lift them up. Encourage them. Have good things to say about them. Give them those words of affirmation that, that, that help them know, hey, brother, I know you're going through a lot. I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep on keeping on. Don't quit. Ah, oh. how many times have we wanted to quit and had a brother or sister drop a, a, a handful of purpose in our life and make us just feel like a dog? Why? Because it softened that heart. What does that hardened heart do? It makes us feel like we deserve better. What does that softened heart do? It helps us realize what we really deserve. You yeah. know. Exhort one another. You're not all by yourself. There's brothers and sisters across your aisle that you sit in that need your help, need your love, need your exhortation, your, your encouragement. I, I've, I've told it many times. I'm going to tell it again. Y'all ain't got nowhere to be, do you? Huh? I was mad at God. I was mad at him. I'd been praying, and at the old house we lived at in Mount Sherman, I had a closet back there, and we were battling infertility. And I hated that. Did we not hate that, Mama? And um, we had been going to some doctors and had some quote-unquote hope given to us that we were going to be able to conceive, and it didn't happen. And that morning... Before I went to work, I think I was in home health at the time. I uh, I went to that closet in that spare bedroom. It had a big old closet that came back. You remember? And I had a coffee table in there, a spare coffee table, and I made me a prayer spot on it. And I was praying, and I wasn't doing any good because I had embraced a hardened heart. I had, if I'm being honest. And praying, quote unquote, I made this statement. I said, God, sometimes I don't even know what the use is anymore. Now at that time, I was the pastor here already. God had been bountifully good to me. But I thought I deserved something. And God wasn't giving me what I wanted. And I quit praying. I got up walked out of that closet and before I could get out of that spare bedroom I got a text message and it said something like hey Caleb I love you, I'm praying for you press on, don't quit keep going and you know what I did, I piled up on the couch there in the living room and my heart got tendered because my brother in Christ exhorted me he encouraged me. He, he reaffirmed what I knew was right, which is it's worth it. It's worth it all. He's been better than I deserved. And when I look around and I think, no, I deserve this or I deserve that, and it's not been good. You know what's real good is for a, a, a brother or sister to just say, hey, brother, I love you. I can't tell you the times. It's a Sunday morning and I'm getting ready to preach and I'm just like, ah, oh, I just don't know and I'm struggling. And I'll have a brother text me and say, brother, preach the house down. I love you. You just keep on keeping on. It's like, it's worth it. It's worth it. Why do people not go into Canaan land? Because they don't help others. 
They're standing alone, trying to do everything on their own. And God gave you a church family for a reason. Amen. Amen? And it's time that we help others. Lastly, and I'm done, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. This is really what, this is the end all be all, verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hear him. Hurry up. Harden not your heart. Help others. Lastly, hope in God. Hope. It's kind of become, you know, everybody says it, and it's, it's worth reiterating, and that is that hope is not a wish. Hope is not a wish. To hope is not, Christian, biblical, scriptural hope is not to wish. Christian, biblical, scriptural hope, listen to me, is to expect. Listen to me. This, this, can really, this can really transform your Christian life if you'll hear this. Hear him. Ain't that what the first thing was? Hear him. You need to hear this tonight. I'm done. I'm winding down. It doesn't matter what storm you're going through. All storms are different. Some last longer than others. Some last years. Some last just a moment. Some is just a blimp on the radar. Just a boop and they're gone. Some take up your whole life. And, and it doesn't matter the storm. He's bigger. And, and listen, and, and you can believe in him. And if you don't believe in him, you're going to miss your Canaan land. It doesn't say, well, it's just so intimidating. Listen to me, man. It doesn't matter. Whatever the will of God is for your life, no matter how frightening, no matter how intimidating, no matter how much bigger than you it is, if you'll trust him, you say, well, I'm not just worried about me. I'm worried about the people it will affect when I make the decision. Yeah, and he's got it under control. He wouldn't send you if he wasn't going to take care of those that it'll affect. He wouldn't call you. He wouldn't direct you if it wasn't, if he wasn't going to take care of everything. Everything. You believe that. And when that happens in your life, and God speaks into you, and you know it's him, and you know you don't have forever, you've got to hurry up. And your pride starts rearing its head and you say, no, no, pride. I need a soft heart in this. And you're tempted to t tuck tail and run. I want you to hope in God. I want you to say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you are. God, I don't know the end from the beginning, but I know you do. And you have made it abundantly clear what your will is, and I'm going to do it. And you'll take care of this. How do people get in? How do people go into that Canaan land? How do people get to the place where they're willing to do that, and they go in, they don't miss the will of God, and their life is not ruined? I believe they are obedient to these steps, and it carries them into that land. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Brother Beckham, if you would, won't you come? It's been a good evening. I know my gear was a little low tonight. Just chill, just real. I like, I like getting to be real with you, just talk to you like it is. May we heed the preached word.